let's look at some examples of courtroom vocabulary. Watch the following clips from Legally Blonde for examples of your courtroom vocabulary. I have to tell you the real reason I came here. Professor Callahan says we really, really need your alibi. Oh, I can't. I mean, you don't understand. Who could understand better than me? It's so shameful. Whatever it is, Brooke, it could save you. No, that's just it. It would ruin me. How? I've made my fortune on the ability to perfect women's bodies with Brooke's butt buster workout. I know, you helped me go from a six to a four. It's great. Um, on the day of Hayworth's murder, I was getting liver What? I was getting Way. She's a law student. She can't defend you. <clears throat> uh, Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court ruling 3.03. See? Thank you, David. Counselors, approach the bench. You're not going up there. Oh, yes, I am. I'm sorry, maybe you didn't hear me. You were fired. Counselors, now all of you. Well then, Ms. Woods, proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Enjoy prison. Mrs. Wyndham, you do realize what you're doing. Absolutely. Oh my God, there she is. Ella! Ella, we came to see your trial. Oh, look how cute. There's like a judge and everything. And jury people. Vote for Ella! Ladies, take a seat. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Be seated. Ms. Woods, you may begin your questioning. Um, first of all, I would like to point out that not only is there no proof in this case, but there's a complete lack of um, mens rea, which by definition tells us that <laughs> there can be no crime without a vicious will. I am aware of the meaning of mens rea. What I'm unaware of is why you're giving me a vocabulary lesson when you should be questioning your witness. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Miss Wyndham, when you arrived back at the house, um, was your father there? Not that I saw, but like I said, I went straight upstairs to take a shower. And uh, when you came downstairs, what happened? I saw Brooke standing over his body, drenched in his blood. Um, uh, but Mrs. Wyndham didn't have a gun. No, she'd stashed it by then. We need to strike that from the record, Your Honor. It's speculation. So stricken. Um, Miss Wyndham, did you hear a shot fired? No, I was in the shower. Okay. So, sometime in the 20 minutes that you were in the shower, your father was shot? I guess. Your father was shot while you were in the shower, but you didn't hear the shot because, um, because you were in the shower? Yes. I was washing my hair. <laughs> Where is she going with this? Have a little faith, Julie. Uh, 
um, Miss Wyndham, what had you done earlier that day? I got up, got a latte, went to the gym, got a perm, and came home. Well, you got in the shower? I believe the witness has made it clear that she was in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Um, Miss Wyndham, had you ever gotten a perm before? Yes. How many would you say? Two a year since I was 12. You do the math. You know, a girl in my sorority, Tracy Marcinko, got a perm once. We all tried to talk her out of it. Curls weren't a good look for her. She didn't have your bone structure. Oh. But thankfully, that same day, she entered the Beta Delta Pi wet t-shirt contest where she was completely hosed down from head to toe. Objection. Why is this relevant? Oh, I have a point, I promise. Then make it. Yes, ma'am. Um, Chutney, why is it that Tracy Marcinko's curls were ruined when she got hosed down? Because they got wet? Exactly. Because isn't it the first cardinal rule of perm maintenance that you're forbidden to wet your hair for at least 24 hours after getting a perm at the risk of deactivating the ammonium thyglocalate? Uh, yes. And wouldn't somebody who's had, say, 30 perms before in their life be well aware of this rule? What? And if, in fact, you weren't washing your hair, as I suspect you weren't because your curls are still intact, wouldn't you have heard the gunshot? And if, in fact, you had heard the gunshot, Brooke Wyndham wouldn't have had time to hide the gun before you got downstairs, which would mean that you would have had to have found Mrs. Wyndham with a gun in her hand to make your story plausible. Isn't that right? She's my age. Did she tell you that? How would you feel if your father married someone who was your age? You, however, had time to hide the gun, didn't you, Chutney? After you shot your father. I didn't mean to shoot him. I thought it was you walking through the door. Order, order. Order. Oh. oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Bailiff, take the witness into custody where she will be charged for the murder of Hayworth Wyndham. In the matter of the state versus Brooke Wyndham, this case is dismissed. Mrs. Wyndham, you're free to go. <laughs> The following clip is from the film Philadelphia and we'll give you examples of jury vocabulary. Uh, they are saying that he wasn't a good lawyer, that he was mediocre. And the fact that they gave him the most important lawsuit that they ever had for one of their most important clients, now they say that that doesn't prove anything because that was just a test. What did they call it, a carrot? Yeah, it was yeah. a duck. <laughs> to see if he would rise to the occasion. Okay, okay, so. Say I got to send a pilot into enemy territory and he's going to be flying a plane. It costs $350 million. Who am I going to put in that plane? Some rookie who can't cut the grade because I want to see if he can rise to the challenge? Or am I going to give that assignment to my best pilot, my sharpest, my most experienced, my top gun, the very best I got? But I just don't get that. Would somebody please explain it to me? Like I'm a six-year-old? <laughs> Turn number six. I agree. Turn number seven. I agree. Turn number eight. Agree. Turn number nine. I agree. Turn number ten. I disagree. Turn number eleven. I agree. Turn number twelve. Agree. Have you awarded any damages? Yes, Your Honor, we have. For back pay and loss of benefits, we award $143,000. For mental anguish and humiliation, we award $100,000. And for punitive damages, we award $4,782,000. You may record the verdict. Everyone remains seated until the jury is removed. This trial is now concluded. <laughs>